Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're talking about the altar and who is at the altar. We need to know who is there at the altar. Who's in charge? So I want to read to you uh, some verses in chapter 7 of the book of Hebrews and talk a little bit about this, okay? So who is at the altar? We need to know. Okay, so I'm going to start in uh, verse 22 and read through to 27, okay? In keeping with the oath's greatness and strength and force, Jesus has become the guarantee of a better, stronger agreement, a more excellent and more advantageous covenant, referring, comparing that to the old covenant. Again, the former successive line of priests was made up of many because they were each prevented by death from continuing perpetually in office. So all the other priests died, so they couldn't continue to be the high priest. But he, Jesus, holds his priesthood unchangeably because he lives forever. 25, therefore he is able also to save to the uttermost completely, perfectly, finally, for all time and eternity, those who come to God through him, since he's always living to make petition to God and intercede with him and intervene for them. Here is, verse 26, the high priest, perfectly adapted to our needs because remember he was human in every way he had all the human frailties and weaknesses here is the high priest perfectly adapted to our needs he understands it all as was fitting holy blameless unstained by sin separated from sinners and exalted higher than the heavens and now verse 27 he has no day by day necessity as do each of these other high priests to offer sacrifice first of all for his own personal sins and then for those of the people because he met all the requirements once for all when he brought himself as a sacrifice which he offered up. So let's look at that verse. Okay, so we want to know who's at the altar. Well, let's read this verse again. Talking about Jesus. He has no day by day necessity as do each of these other high priest Aaron and on down the line to offer sacrifices first for his own personal sins that's the first thing and then for those of the people why does he not have to do that anymore because he met all of the requirements to please God perfectly how many times? Once for who? For all who believe when he brought himself. Remember, God wanted a body. He didn't want sacrifices and offerings. He wanted a body. This is the body that Jesus Christ brought. He brought himself as a, not just a sacrifice, the perfect and eternal sacrifice that nothing can compare he brought himself as a sacrifice which he offered up to God. And that was the perfect sacrifice. So the answer, this is telling us he has no day-by-day -day necessity to offer sacrifices for himself or for those of the people like the other high priest did. So who's at the altar? Nobody's at the altar. Nobody. But Jesus Christ is still the high priest, although he's finished his work and he has sat down. He sat down. Okay, so that means it's finished. There's nothing else to do at the altar ever, ever, ever. That's what the Word of God is telling us. Now, you may be able to see it or hear it. You may be able to accept it or not. That's between you and God. But this is what the Scripture is saying. So the question, who's at the altar? Nobody. Nobody needs to be at the altar anymore because the perfect Lamb of God has given the perfect and eternal sacrifice. It's perfect. And if you speak
speaking of all, once for all, if you are in Christ, you're included in that all. All who believe. Do you believe? Then you're included in that. That means that the perfection of meeting all the requirements that Jesus did when he offered up himself as a sacrifice, you are in Christ. So you, by faith, are meeting all of the requirements in Christ to please God. And that is by faith. Okay? By faith. That's we do everything by faith. Right? We walk by faith. We live by faith. So there's another verse that really underlines this. And so the question, who's at the altar? Nobody. Why not? Well, because Jesus was the perfect high priest and his work is finished and he has sat down. But secondarily, why not? Hebrews 10, 11 through 18. I'll read you that uh, real quick. Hebrews um, 10, 11. Here it is. Okay, furthermore, listen to this. Every human priest stands at his altar of service. Remember how he talked about um, as do each of these other high priests? Well, that's what he's talking about. Furthermore, every human priest stands at his altar of service, ministering daily, offering the same sacrifices over and over again, like mentioned over here, over and over again, which never are able to strip from every side of us the sins that envelop us and take them away. He's saying in verse 11 that this can never take away sins. Can never take away sins. Whereas, verse 12, this one, Jesus Christ, after he had offered a single sacrifice for our sins that shall avail for all time, sat down at the right hand of God. Then to wait until his enemies should be made a stool beneath his feet. Verse 14, for by a single sacrifice, offering once for all he has past tense forever completely cleansed and perfected those who are consecrated being consecrated and being made holy we are consecrated and we're being made holy that's us the saints those who believe and also the holy spirit holy spirit adds his testimony to us in confirmation of this because for having said, this is the agreement, the testament, the will, the covenant that I will set up and conclude with them after those days, says the Lord, I will imprint my laws upon their hearts and I will inscribe them on their minds, on their inmost thoughts and understanding. He then goes on to say, and their sins and their law breaking, I will remember no more. Why does he not need to remember them? Because they've all been taken care of by this. They have been stripped away like Colossians 2.11 says. And that is conclusive. So, um, my laws upon their hearts, I will inscribe them on their minds, on their inmost thoughts and understanding. Uh, 17. Then he goes on to say, in their sins and their law breaking, I will remember no more. 18. Now, where there is absolute remission for the only one and perfect eternal sacrifice where there is absolute remission. That means no exception for a forgiveness and cancellation of every penalty that you could ever come up with, past, present, or future. Now, where there is absolute remission, only in Jesus Christ is there already absolute remission. Forgiveness and cancellation of the penalty of these sins and law breaking. There is no longer any offering made to atone for sin. So this is our faith. This is our faith that he's talking about. There is no longer any there is no longer any offering made to atone for sin. If the altar were still being tended, there would need to be an offering for sin made. But there's nobody at the altar. Hello, nobody's there. What does that tell you? Nobody needs to be there because it's been taken care of. Who took care of it? Jesus Christ. All of this 
Because he met all. How much? How many is all? Is it fifty percent? Is it seventy percent? Is it ninety percent? Is it ninety nine point nine 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 nine? No, it's one hundred percent all the requirements to please God fully. Once for all. Once means he's never going to do it again. All means this applies for all men who believe for all time for all sin. When he brought himself as a sacrifice which he offered up. That is what he's talking about. And then particularly in 10, uh, 18, he says um, that I just kind of went over where there is absolute remission. See, if there wasn't absolute remission, then there would be somebody at the altar. If there wasn't absolute remission, there would be somebody at the altar. There would be. But there's not. So that means there's absolute remission. Absolute remission means spiritual circumcision. That means the sins have been taken away. Taken away. Where there is absolute remission, that means remission means forgiveness. Not just forgiveness, but cancellation of the penalty. So you had a mark against you. God forgave you and he took away the mark. That's how complete he is. So where there is absolute remission, forgiveness, and cancellation of the penalty of these. What's these? All the sin, past, present, and future, and all the law-breaking, past, present, and future. There is no longer any offering to be made to atone for sin. This is how and why Jesus Christ could say right before he died, it is finished. This is the work he came to do. This is the work he came to do to cancel out your sins and take them away. They are gone according to the Lord. And this is old news to him. I know some of us are never really going to get this. And even if we do, we'll probably just keep resisting. But the Lord wants everyone who is willing to receive this truth to receive it deep into their hearts. Because he deserves the credit. He deserves the glory. He deserves all recognition for what he has done. And this is what he has done. There is no one at the altar because the perfect and eternal sacrifice has been made. Okay, so if you're still feeling that you have a day-by-day -day necessity to offer up sacrifices, you got business to do with the Lord. You do, because that is not biblical. If you wanna be lined up with the Lord, you can be way over here or way over there, or, you know, be spinning things out of context, doing whatever you want. But if you want to line up with the Lord, you got to come over here and do business with him here and let him work in your heart so that you can line up with him because this is the truth. There is no one at the altar. Why? Because there's been absolute remission of all sin and law breaking and no more atonement and offerings and sacrifices to be made. This is the gospel. This is the gospel. This is the good news for all who will believe. And I pray that you will believe that Jesus Christ has died and risen from the dead just for you to take away your sins and to make you right with God. All right. I'll see you soon.